All right, let's talk about color, shall we? Now, with color, the first thing we're going to talk about is this, I know. Stay with me here. All right, so if we look at the top here, we have a value scale. And value in art um, doesn't just mean like the worth of something, how much something is worth. Value can refer to the lightness or darkness of something. Okay, and so if we say value in art, um, we're, we're referring to its, its lightness or darkness. And we see we have on the top here a 10, uh, 10 value scale here where zero is the darkest, the black, and then it moves all the way up to the, the whitest light at number 10. And we have uh, our different grays in between. So each of those would represent a different value. Now, if you notice on the bottom, we have the same scale, but what I've done here is put a gray bar across the middle. And if you notice, if you look at the gray bar, it looks like it goes from light to dark. But if you were to put your hand over the top and the bottom of the scale, you would see that it's actually the same gray all the way across. That um, the, the, the value itself can be um, you know, slightly altered visually by the value right next to it. If you notice on the left, the gray looks lighter because it's around darker colors. That same gray on the right looks darker because it's surrounded by lighter colors. Um, this is something to keep in mind when we're looking at art, when we're looking at uh, values of things, and as well as color too, because the same type of thing can happen with color. Color can appear to be brighter um, you know, next to its complement, for instance. Um, it can also blend in maybe a little bit more with other surrounding colors. Um, so that, that, that's something to keep in mind as well. Okay, but we're going to use this term value in, uh, in, in uh, one of the three aspects of color. So that's why I wanted to start here with, uh, with that particular definition of value. All right, so here's color. With color, um, it's, it's certainly a, an interesting thing. Uh, it's an interesting human perception that we have, how we will, will see certain bands of color. Um, it's pretty interesting how it, it works with light, but um, that's not really too important for our information here. Uh, what's more important for us is, is not so much how it uh, you know, actually functions in terms of physics. It's more uh, important uh, for us to, to know essentially how it's used in artwork. And so if we, we look at this, we see our, our basic rainbow um, that, that happens as light travels through a prism and so uh, with this example we see the the, uh, the red to orange to yellow to blue I'm sorry to green to blue to uh, to violet there and so if we would take that band and act like we are wrapping that band around in a circle uh, we would be left with this our color wheel um, our color wheel is the, the traditional way that artists use, um, use color, basically. Um, and with the color wheel, we have primary colors, we have secondary colors, and we have intermediate colors. If you notice, on the inside of the circle, I have put ones, twos, and threes. Uh, the ones are where the primaries are located. That is the yellow, the red, and the blue. And the reason they're called the primaries in this particular um, way to, to achieve color here is because those are the colors you mix to get the other colors. Uh, you can mix a yellow and red and get an orange, uh, but you can't really mix an orange and a green and get yellow. It doesn't work that way in terms of mixing colors. And so this is why this is the system that painters have used uh, for, for quite some time. And so if we look at those primaries, the ones there, and we mix those, we mix the yellow and the red, we get our first secondary orange. If we mix red and blue, we get our second secondary, which would be purple. And then if we mix blue and yellow, we get our third secondary, which would be green. So orange, green, and purple are our three secondaries. Um, and they are made by mixing the primaries. 
And so uh, that is where the secondaries come from. And then we have what we call intermediates. Uh, sometimes you might hear it referred to as tertiary colors. Uh, means the same thing here. And once we get our primaries and secondaries, the, the intermediates are, are pretty simple because it's just the name of the two colors next to it. And if you ever get confused, it's the primary that is said first. And so in between yellow and orange, it's called yellow-orange. In between uh, orange and red, it's it's red orange. In between red and purple, it's red purple. And then we have blue purple, and then blue green, and then yellow green. And those are our six intermediate hues that, that you get in between the primaries and the secondaries there. Okay, so that's um, the, the information that we, that we really need to know here for the color wheel. Um, and if we look at the color wheel, there's, there's also colors that are um, kind of defined as warm and cool. Uh, warm colors would be pretty much everything from yellow to red. Those are considered warm. Uh, think temperature or heat. Whereas cool colors would be anything from green to blue to purple uh, on that side of the color wheel. And uh, color is, 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 um, is really divided into different types of, of contrast. And this type of warm, cool is a type of contrast that we see, uh, especially when we get more into uh, uh, color theory, which we really won't get into really in this class. So uh, the most important thing here is to know the primaries and secondaries and intermediates for this traditional color wheel. Okay, but this uh, really is just the first kind of system of color we're going to go over because there are a couple of other systems of color that we see uh, being used as well. Okay, the, um, the next system of color that we see is the CYMK method. We'll, we'll call it that. Now, if we look at the traditional color wheel and this CYMK method, um, the way that we are getting the color is by actually mixing the colors to get together. And so you're, you're talking about working with pigment, and so color behaves differently than if you were just working with um, you know, pure uh, light like this. And so the CYMK method is, is another one of those, those color methods that's like the traditional color wheel where you're actually kind of building up the colors. And you can kind of see that in the schematic over here to the left how uh, the colors are, are basically mixed or built up. And so with the CYMK method, that that's basically stands for the three primaries in this particular method. This is how um, modern printing usually works here. And so the C stands for cyan, the yellow stands for, oh, sorry, the Y stands for yellow, and then the M stands for magenta. And so the way you get your secondaries in this particular method here is you simply mix your uh, primaries. And so the cyan and the yellow together give you green, the yellow and the magenta give you red, and the magenta and the cyan give you blue. Now if you mix all three of the secondaries, you should theoretically at least get a black. Um, and we'll see that that's where the, the K comes in. Um, the K um, is actually stands for key, and uh, we'll get into why it's used here in a little while. All right, so this is a good example of how something would be printed. You see on the bottom left uh, how an image would look like using this printed, printing method. And if you zoomed in really close, you would see the little detail view there on the bottom right. Uh, that is basically a, a bunch of dots here that is printed over um, each other and your eye visually blends the color and so where a red, a primarily red and yellow area would, would visually blend you together and you would see it as an orange. And so that's, that's uh, largely how this printing method works. Uh, you can actually look at like cereal boxes or things, and if you zoom in really close, you have like a magnifying glass or something, uh, you can see you know, this little pattern uh, come up because, um, because of, of the, the process with which it's, uh, it's printed. And so you see on the top, the cyan would be printed, and the magenta would be printed, and then the yellow would be printed, and then the, the, the key, the K, or the black would be printed as well. And the reason why the K is used is that it really helps boost those dark values. That, like I said, theoretically all those three together should give you a, a black, but it's, it's really not a rich black. It's, um, 
uh, it's a little bit uh, kind of weak. And so the, the black is used to, to boost up those dark values and, uh, and get some you know, more sharp details and contrasts. Okay. And so, again, with this particular method here, we have our three primaries being cyan, yellow, magenta. That's what the CYM stand for. And then, of course, the, the K for the key of black. And then the other thing we need to know is our secondaries, that they create the, the green, the blue, and the red. All right, so that is our second method. Uh, this third method is a little bit different. Instead of mixing colors, we're, we're really talking about um, you know, projected light. And so something, uh, something electrical uh, or like a computer screen, maybe a cell phone, something along those lines where, where light's actually being projected um, it, it actually works in a, in a little bit of a different way. Um, it works in this method. This is called the RGB method. And similar to uh, this other one here, how the CYMK uh, basically stands for the colors used in that particular method as far as the primaries are concerned, it's the same thing here. Except the primaries here, if you notice, are the opposite of the previous method. Um, the primaries here are red, green, and blue, and so when you project light and you mix those, when you mix your green and blue, you get a cyan. When you mix your green and red, you get a yellow. When you mix your uh, red and blue, you get a magenta. And so uh, those are the secondaries. They're, they're simply the reverse or the flip of the previous method. And so if you know the primaries here, you know the secondaries here, uh, then you know for this method, it's just the opposite. Um, that the title tells you the three primaries, and then the, the secondaries um, are what are created by the addition of those primaries. Now, all of these colors together, because again, with, with projected light here, uh, that's how the, the, the light is produced, by adding all of the colors. And so all of the primaries, if you add the red, the green, and the blue all together, you get a white. And so this is, um, like, I, like I mentioned, this is how uh, electrical light works uh, when you're projecting uh, light for instance maybe um, a good example would possibly be like the theater or something along those lines um, this is is the type of thing that you are uh, you're going to uh, see as far as how the color is created all right so one thing that is in common with all of these are what we call the three aspects of color okay the first aspect of color is simply called a hue. Okay, H U E hue. And I have to admit, it took me uh, kind of embarrassing. It took me a long time to kind of figure out what hue meant. And um, it turns out that the definition was a lot simpler than I thought. Um, that hue basically means color. If you're talking about hue, you're talking about a certain category of color. And so blue is a hue. Green is a hue. Red is a hue. It's a particular category of color. And so that's our first aspect of color, hue. The second aspect of color that we see is what we saw here, value. That with each colors or each of the colors, we can have different values. With reds, we can, uh, we can have different values of red. We can have different values of blue. Um, each of the colors are going to kind of naturally have their own value, but by adding white and black, we can modulate those, those uh, different different values. And so just like you can create a value scale with, with uh, white and black here and gray, you could create one in red or blue uh, or yellow or purple. And you can still get that full range of light to dark. Now to do that, you have to um, mix what we call tints and shades. A tint is any color with white added. A shade is any color with dark added. And so, for instance, uh, if we see um, a light green, then that would be a tint of green. If we were to see, like, um, a maroon, for instance, then that would be a, a shade of red. Okay, and so um, these, these tints are or these shades are, are ways we can get different mileage in terms of value with our different colors. Uh, because otherwise, uh, yellow is just going to stay very light in nature and purple would stay very dark in nature. But by adding light, we can get you know, different lavenders and, and, uh, and, and different colors like that that we can use. 
Um, another term we could use along with value would be tones. Tone is when you mix gray with the color. Okay, or you, you, you kind of modulate it by using a shade and, and a tint together, which, which would be essentially doing the same thing as adding a, a, um, a, a gray to it. And so that, that second aspect of color is value. And the third aspect of color is what we call intensity. Um, it's also referred to as chroma or saturation, so any of those are fine if you want to use any of those, but uh, we'll call it intensity. Um, and it's basically kind of like the, the brightness of the color or the pure, purity of the color. Um, color in its most pure is a color at its most intense. And when you start to add white, and you start to add black, and you start to add tones of gray, then that knocks the intensity down. But it doesn't change the value. That's an important thing to keep in mind, that value itself is, is not really changed um, by like a gray, but it's definitely going to change the intensity. It's not going to be as bright. It's not going to be uh, quite as saturated. Okay, so, um, so that's an important thing to, uh, to make a distinction of up there, that the intensity is essentially the purity of the color. Okay, so uh, that pretty much uh, covers this particular section here. Um, uh, that, that should be it. I can't think of anything else, so, uh, so this should, should, uh, should suffice for our little section of color.